morning, YouTubers. It's a rainy morning in Portland, Oregon. I want to talk about context. My last video, I was geometry of lumps, and I was spelling out, again, because it's kind of what I teach, uh, how we could, if we wanted to, <clears throat> make the Bucky Fuller stuff contemporary again by linking his idea of language games well his not his idea his idea was synergetics but he also had another approach to dimension and what that means and this book which is the older edition of linda's book on art history traces the history of what it calls non-euclidean geometry and is Fuller's geometry Euclidean and stuff like that? We can ask these questions. It's not about what I think. I also bring up Don Quixote and the windmills quite a bit as like, isn't it entirely hopeless and ridiculous to think that we could somehow disrupt or change like the momentum of Western civilization, Eastern civilization. I don't know what the difference is right away, but we're talking about math that's thousands of years old and lots going on. It's a renaissance right now in linear algebra. This uh, idea of gradient descent, what I call gradual de descent, uh, just for this picture. I don't make up my own language here. I'm just saying this is an elevator man. He's trying to minimize error because we have this error function. And we do this thing where we take derivative and try to sort of hold our little gauge in our hand and see which direction is the steepest up and then we go the opposite direction because we're trying to get down a hill and these metaphors are great and metaphors are what we're looking for in the history of my watching YouTube you can see that right after looking at geometry of lumps again I'm, I'm in between NumPy and pandas and teaching myself more about machine learning and I get into uh, this uh, three blue brown episode about how do we visualize higher dimensions and he goes with the sliders and how they're hooked together though by the distance function the distance function is what generalizes across uh, all these different so-called so dimensional spaces we can still compute the second root of the second powers added together of whatever coordinates. And in quadrays, we do the same thing, more or less. Remember, quadrays, we can convert to XYZ coordinates and back into quadrays. So it's a two-way street there. All the concepts are analogous. So I think Fuller, and then he adds time where? As the concept of frequency. So once you have your shapes in kind of platonic space, which are eternal and timeless and have their angles, but they don't have a specific size relative to, say, my laptop, whereas this one does. This one's made out of cardboard. It has added dimensions in the sense of mass. Um, it's not just shape anymore, right? It actually has location in what we could call time size instead of time space or space time. Fuller called it time size. But it's the same thing as space-time or time size, uh, time-space, space-time. We're here in this world, and we've added frequency in that case. Frequency, frequency is what makes it special case, whereas if it's pure angle, it's eternal. And then we have the volume number three for the cube and six for the rhombic dodecahedron. It's a fun language game. We can dive into it much as we would dive into chess or checkers or a game of cards. It has its own integrity. There's nothing uh, in it that like is trying to get rid of linear algebra, which, as I say, is having a heyday right now. It's having a renaissance. And I'm teaching it, too, is what I'm saying. I'm part of this army of people who's interested in the stochastic methods of, uh, let's see, what I watched right after that was brilliant, uh, Gal Yona in Tel Aviv talking at Pi Data about uh, her research and what does she call it stochastic it's called pi uh, let's see anyway it's the same problem how do you get multi-dimensional data downloaded or compressed 
to where you can think about it and visualize it. Then I went on, and this is probably a lot of me is sleeping through the night while YouTube runs in my ear, and I'm listening to Snowden and Manning and uh, Assange. Now, all of these people are quote-unquote whistleblowers or maybe they're treasonous or whatever. We have a very polar, polarized world right now where psychologically and ideologically, I would say it's it's pretty stressful on people, but hasn't it always been? There's a feeling that we could do some good stuff here. And I'm my thinking is over in the social engineering world, linking up to the universal basic income idea and just thinking more generally again about how how does wealth flow and what I'm trying to get clear on in these most recent essays um, is the easy part where we can just see the earth as a planet a big sphere like a campus and the inputs are very simple there's mass raining in all the time from meteors and so on there is actual dirt falling from the sky at all times sometimes just dust right but the earth is getting a steady income of space matter but our main income of course is radiation frequencies um, we're plugged into the sun it's a, we're like a power a powered appliance so that's the easy part. Then you get to the earth and then we have to think about, you know, the evaporation cycle and water running downhill, gravity powering our water wheels, and then what? We make bread, there's photosynthesis involved, there's harvesting. So just thinking about these basics really in a cartoon simulation almost is how we then build up our intuitions as to how the planet works using simulations. I'm calling it cruise ship Earth because there we're drawing the circle in another place around a, around a cruise ship. If you've operated a cruise ship and I have not, or a hotel or a mixed-use skyscraper, you've got your inputs and you've got your outputs. You know, And people can live in this building or cruise ship and do their work, they can sleep there, everything is self-contained in this picture, like in Biosphere 2. And But of course, a cruise ship is an open system. I'm not saying self-contained in the sense that you could turn a cruise ship into a rocket and, and send it out to another planet with years and years, decades, just hanging in space as a biosphere. That's not what I'm saying. We need planet Earth for the cruise ship to work, but cruise ship Earth is itself kind of just floating in space with only solar input and some dirt. And so we've got the elements we need, we've got recycling, but it's this Earth that we have and need to think about coherently, and that's something I think Fuller did really well. So my agenda is to encourage high-level conversation and thinking and planning on the part of people who don't think they have any political power whatsoever. You can still think, talk, imagine, and participate and grow, in, and you should be paid to do that, is what I'm saying. Then the other side of things is how do we get to where we're taking this kind of thinking seriously? I think Fuller is our ramp up. Uh, one of them, and what we need to do to get his thinking more widely shared is to show that the 4D stuff is not going to take over the world. It's not going to replace linear algebra. Um, but on the other hand, it's not just kooky crackpotty stuff. It's readable, interesting philosophy. I think that's enough of a little bit of a retro rocket boost right there to um, shift things just a little and maybe push us further down the gradient descent curve. We're minimizing our error, and if we add, we shift things in the dimension towards the Bucky stuff a little bit, we're going to descend a little more, if you know what I mean, which is a good thing. Gradient descent means minimizing error. It doesn't mean going to hell. It's the opposite, okay? All right, that's enough rambling. I hope you understand my main point, which is I'm not taking on the Don Quixote quixotic mission of somehow
bringing linear algebra to its knees right when it's enjoying a renaissance. That's not at all my goal. My goal is to see how philosophically we don't need, we can have another sandcastle elsewhere on the beach at the same time and play with that, and that too can participate in the overall learning process and minimizing error over time, getting less awkward and stupid, really. I'm all for that. All right, talk to you later.